This is chapter three, part two. In this lesson, we are going to compare variables using conditional distributions and then determine if variables are independent. In the last video, it left off by saying that you could use a comparative bar chart to compare the three medications, and this is what a comparative bar chart looks like. As a review, read this um, paragraph and then describe the W's. Put the video on pause while you do it because the answers are going to appear here in about two seconds. And here are the answers. Um, you will notice that on where and when I put a question mark because it doesn't explicitly state that this was done in the U.S., but it was published in an American journal. And it doesn't say the study was done in 2002, but it was published in 2002. So when we look at two categorical variables at the same time, we often arrange them into a two-way table, which is also known as a contingency table. When you look at a two-way table, you will notice you have this area here called the margins. So right here, we have a margin, and here we have a margin. The margins of the table give the totals for each variable. These totals are called the marginal distributions of the two variables. Within the table, we have sections called cells. So each of these boxes is called a cell. And we can answer these questions by looking at the cells. So we could say how many people took the placebo and had no effect. So we're looking at placebo and no effect. So that would be 66 people. 66 people, that's an interesting number, but what does it really mean? It would probably be more meaningful if we had relative frequencies or per percentages. The percentages are more difficult to find because you have three different possible denominators. We could have any of these three numbers as our denominator. So if the question is asked, um, what proportion of people took the placebo and had no response? We're talking about 66 people out of the entire group, 338. But if you ask the question, how many or what proportion of placebo users had no response? Well, placebo users would be this column, and then 66 of them had no response, so it would be 66 out of 116. If the question was asked, what proportion of people had no response who took the placebo, now we're looking now we're looking at this. Proportion of people with no response who took the placebo. 66 out of 192. So you can get different answers depending on what way the question was worded. Once the proportions have been turned into decimals, it's easy to see that you get various widely different answers depending on how the question was asked. So did the responses of the subjects depend on which medication was given? To determine this, we can compare the conditional distributions of each medication. A conditional distribution looks at the distribution of one variable when the value of the other variable is fixed. So we have St. John's Wart calculated here where we're looking at the 113 people that took St. John's Wart, what proportion had full response, partial response, and no response. So using St. John's as an example, you calculate Zoloft and placebo. Hit pause while you do it because the answers will appear in about two seconds. So now we have the conditional distributions for Zoloft and the placebo. Next what we want to do is make a segmented bar chart for all three distributions. Okay, first we set up the um, chart by putting the percentages on the left side and the type of medication on, on the bottom. And notice that we are going to have spaces between the bars to show that these bars could be rearranged. St. John's does not have to be first and then Zoloft and then placebo. We could rearrange them in any order. Okay, next we'll need a scale, not a scale, but a key. So what we do to make a segmented bar chart is we take our 
um, relative frequencies, our conditional frequencies from the distribution, and we stack them up. So 24% of the St. John's Wart users had full response, and then 14% on top of that had partial response, and then 62% on top of that had no response. So this is what your segmented bar chart would look like. You go ahead and do Zoloft and placebo and the answers will appear shortly. So there we have our segmented bar chart. So now, do the results look the same for all three medications? And obviously they do not. So this brings us to our discussion about independence, which will be on the next video.